everybody. Could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Engineers at UC San Diego have created a new material that could change the way we generate electricity. The new material has a multi-scale nanostructured surface covered with tiny particles of varying sizes. It's designed to absorb light and convert it to heat, and it's efficient. It converts better than 90% of the sunlight it captures to heat. I've told you about advancements in solar panel technology a couple of times in recent weeks, but this one is a bit different. The big difference is that this new material that the UC San Diego team has developed isn't designed to charge batteries. It's part of a process called concentrating solar power, or CSP, which uses heat from captured sunlight to heat water, creating steam, which drives a turbine, ultimately generating electricity the same way a coal power plant does, only without the dirty and costly fossil fuel. Existing turbine-driven power plants could be retrofitted to run on CSP, meaning that this material has the potential to spur a clean energy revolution the likes of which many of us have been anticipating for decades. The UC San Diego team's work is being funded by the Department of Energy's SunShot initiative, which aims to create and implement efficient, competitively priced solar power technologies by the year 2020. Next up, researchers at Rockefeller University have developed a method for transforming antibodies into nanobodies. Nanobodies are similar to antibodies, the proteins used by our immune systems to identify invaders like viruses and bacteria, but nanobodies are smaller and less complex. This makes them ideal tools for research. They can do many of the things antibodies can do, and because of their smaller sizes, they can also go places some antibodies can't go. The problem has been finding a reliable method of tuning nanobodies to recognize and seek out particular molecular targets. Now, the Rockefeller University team may have solved that problem. First, the researchers used RNA sequencing to select antibodies that targeted particular antigens. They then used a chemical process to cut away everything but the antigen binding sections, transforming the antibodies into nanobodies. Then they analyzed the chemical structure of the newly pruned nanobodies and engineered bacteria that enabled them to mass produce more of the same type of nanobodies. The method is complicated, but it succeeded in producing 31 varieties of nanobodies for their test study which is published in the journal Nature Methods. And finally, scientists in Russia have proposed a new method of laser propulsion for rockets and aircraft. The method, described in an article published in the journal Applied Optics, combines two types of propulsion systems to increase thrust while reducing the amount of expended fuel. The two systems are laser ablation, which creates thrust by using a laser pulse to heat a surface generating a plasma plume, and a more conventional jet system that forces gas through a nozzle. The integration of the two systems allows the plasma plume generated by the laser to stabilize the flow of gas through the jet nozzle, resulting in increased speed while burning less fuel. The scientists who devised this method suggest it could be used to launch satellites into Earth orbit or propel aircraft to high hypersonic speeds of Mach 10 and beyond. A new material could enable power plants to generate electricity using the sun rather than fossil fuels. Researchers devise a method for creating very small but very useful nanobodies, and scientists devise a new laser propulsion system that could lead to faster speeds and higher fuel efficiency. That's the good news. And just like that, you're all done. What do you think? Yeah.